Good morning. Good morning. To all God's beloved who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a pleasure to be with you all this morning and worship together. I will draw your attention to a few of the announcements and the upcoming events uh, in your bulletin. First off, there uh, is also uh, no book group this week due to my uh, meeting on Wednesday evening. Uh, so if you are in the book group, uh, note that. Uh, we reviewed that uh, this past week, but uh, we'll be back to normal following this week. Uh, further, uh, the information has put together a few activities for the coming uh, weeks of summer. Uh, first, we're going to uh, invite you to a Bicycle what? run, or anybody yeah. who's interested in your family who likes riding bicycles, perhaps. Uh, this is an idea that uh, we might involve uh, anybody who wants to come uh, and uh, meet at Township Road 81 bike path crossing. For uh, if you have a bike or want to exercise, and, uh, at all of you above, I uh, agree that is an option. Uh, if I end up going by myself, I'll go by myself, but I don't think that will happen. Uh, so uh, I invite anybody next Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock to uh, join me for that. Uh, also on August 21st, a little bit less activity, it's a campfire at 7 o'clock in the evening. So I invite anybody to come for that and we'll have some more materials and uh, uh, fellowship uh, as well. So I invite uh, any of you who are interested to join us at 7 o'clock on the 21st of August as well. That is the Sunday before we go back to school on uh, August the 23rd, which is a Tuesday. So it's like the last weekend of summer kind of celebration, right? Uh, are there any other announcements to begin our service with this morning? Maybe we're just finishing the assembly for the welcome basket, so if you have anything else for that, let us know uh, if you're thinking of anything or planning on anything for that. And uh, sign-up sheets are still on the first few. Thank you to everyone who helped put together yesterday's meal. Uh, there are sign-ups for September's meal as well, uh, as well as literature and social hour uh, on the first few days. as well. There are no other announcements. Let us begin our worship service with our call to community. For all who are able, please rise. Gather before God, people of the covenant. Listen for God's word, O faithful ones. Come to honor God and give thanks. Seek to learn and follow in God's way. God calls us as workers for justice. God sends us out as advocates for the dispirited. We are here to be equipped for ministry. We expect to be empowered for our service. Let us join together in our opening hymn this morning uh, as we ask God to be our vision through uh, all our lives. Be thou my vision, found in our dream book number 5. Okay.
prayer of the faithful. Holy God, you call us to do good, seek justice, and care for those in need. Yet how often we place our own comforts above compassion for others. Forgive us, we pray, and cleanse us from these and all our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. O God, promise, creator of the cosmos, you are the first light bringing through the Lord, and the final light we shall eternally enjoy. Keep our hearts ever vigilant as we wait to welcome you, that you would find us clothed in love, dressed for action, and eager to receive you. God is merciful and kind, though our sins are like scarlet, they become like snow. Be at peace, for your sins are washed clean by the goodness of God. Mercy to God. Exactly. 
That's exactly what I was thinking, too. I open a door and, and you can walk through it, right? Well, there's also another form of a door, which basically means to love very deeply, love a lot. You know what love is? Exactly. That's love. So if you come to church, we, we not only love God and we adore God and, and each other, but we love each other and we love God a lot. And when we come to church, we sing songs and we hug others and then we, we talk to others, all which is all part of our adoring God, our loving God. So, do you uh, enjoy loving each other? So, awesome. Exactly. So, singing is one thing we can do. Uh, when, when, which is one thing we just did too. Uh, when we adore God or when we love God. So that's one of the reasons I like coming to church. Uh, okay. Okay. And uh, we're, we're going to keep singing, and you can join in with us. But we're just singing, you can keep singing. Uh, All right. It's actually a bit too hard. Yeah, it's hard sometimes. But when you know a song, and you might you might pick up on a song in the next couple of weeks, when you know one, you can, you can keep on singing. All right, and, and love others like you love your sister. Keep loving. Uh, that's one way you can adore God. So, can we pray? Yes. All right, let's pray. You want to pray? Yeah. All right. Dear God. Dear God. I don't know. All right. One more thing. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. That when we come to church, that we come to church, we can love you, we can love you, and we can love one another. We can love another, one another. In your name, we pray. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me, Grandson and Elise. See you later when we come to give you food. Okay.
I will tear you apart, and there will be no one to deliver. But those who bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice honor me. To those who go the right way, I will show the salvation of God. May God bless the reading of this word. Now, adoration breeds faith, and faith breeds adoration. The following story from Hebrews tells of Abraham adoring God so much that he responded with a full and confident faith. Let us hear from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 16. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the world's were prepared by the word of God so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land that he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered himself faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born. Many of the stars of heaven and as numerable uh, and as innumerable, innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed they were strangers and foreigners on the earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they, had, that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. He has prepared a city for them. This is the word of the Lord. Now today, as the gospel reading challenges us to store up treasure in heaven and not here on earth, it is the treasure in heaven that deserves our true adoration. So we look forward to that and always stay alert to the coming of this treasure, the coming of the kingdom of heaven. Let us hear these words of Jesus. From Luke chapter 12, verses 32 through 40. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes and where no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps fit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves from whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night, or near dawn and find them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
will you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer, I am in awe of God. Now, I am often more in awe of God after I have come back from an experience of witnessing God's witness. I witness God's creation and the beauty that goes into the curve of every mountain. I am definitely a mountain person. As I was hiking in the Nali National Park last week, I realized how much I missed hiking. There is not a lot of hiking around here in Northwest Ohio, at least it has mountains in them. I love it when I can go somewhere and find that love again. And when I'm able to do that, I can praise God for the opportunity as well as the scenery all around. Some of you may have seen the scenery uh, online that uh, I, I can just I can just stand there. Pictures don't do it justice. I can stand there and probably spend an hour just looking at some of those views that I had. When our small group went to the valley, it rained most of the time. But the rain gave an opportunity for a beautiful rainbow among the clouds. We were planning on going on an evening hike. The rain had already hampered one hike that day. We had started and gone about a, a few hundred yards down the trail and decided to not get soaking wet, but it was continuing. And the rain was threatening another. But the rain stopped around 8.30 to 9 o'clock in the evening. And thanks to the midnight sun up north, we were able to embark on our hike up the mountain at 9 o'clock that evening. We hiked up until about 11 o'clock and started heading down so we could get down before the sun set. We still made it down the mountain before the sun had gone behind the hills. We could praise God for the beautiful mountain vistas that we could take pictures of and just take in, even at that late hour. We were taking pictures of these sun-bathed mountains at 11 o'clock. God still gave us the opportunity to appreciate the mountain. And though we never did see the top of the valley while we were at the park, we had seen the peak from a two hours drive north from the University of Alaska in Fairbanks. The guide said that only about 20 to 30 percent of visitors to the park actually see the peak of the valley, because usually it is hidden among the clouds and creates its own weather the clouds usually hover around the peak. The peak is over 20,000 feet tall, so it is always higher than most levels of clouds would be. I praise God for the opportunities and for the relationships that are formed among strangers as well. I did not know what the size of the group would be or who would be in the group before I met them at the Cleveland airport. I just knew that I had been offered a spot that someone declined, and one of my connections at Ashton University knew that I like to travel to new places and do some mission uh, as well, so they called me up and asked me if I would be interested in joining that spot. And just like any other group, living together in the same place for a week and traveling mostly together, we form a bond. And I think that that bond was strengthened over the communion and the worship that we were able to share together, and it was represented well in a few of the moments that we were feeling awe. And we often share that same moment of awe, whether it was on the mountains or whether it was in the communion or in the worship. One of those moments was on the mountain. Another of those was the next day at a restaurant. One of our team had lost her wallet, 
and she was calling places and looking everywhere for it. And eventually another person decided to bring it to prayer. About five seconds after she ended that prayer, the person who lost it picked up her purse and there the wallet was, right in her lap. That was a magical moment and a moment of awe for all of us. Like God had answered that prayer right then and there in that moment. There are many other moments of awe that I could share with you. We might be here until one o'clock if I did. Um, but I hope that you can take a moment to uh, think about moments that bring you awe as well. Do you allow yourself enough time to experience awe for yourself, however you may best experience that awe? Do you give yourself opportunities to create that awe? If I kept myself from seeing the mountains every now and then at least, I'd be depriving myself of the opportunity of feeling the awe of God over that part of nature. You must create the context for experiencing awe. You must create the context for experiencing awe. Maybe that's in relationships for you, or in prayer, or many different forms. But you can create the context for experiencing awe of God. If you do not create context, then a lack of awe will eventually wash over us. We will not be in awe of God, and we will not be fully devoted to God. Some of us reach challenges holding an awness over God. Just look at the world. But yes, look at the world. When you look at the world, try to see the goodness in it. Look for the helpers, as Fred Rogers would say. Look for the beauty. Look for the opportunities to see people and see new places, especially if you have been dreaming of seeing it or them. I will give you a challenge that we gave ourselves in our book group to try to help you find the correct attitude towards prayer. First, make your list of requests to God and pray those requests consistently and persistently because we all have requests that we want to take to God. But always end your prayer, or at least have as part of your prayer, praise for God. And to do that, you can make yourself a list of reasons that you have to praise God. But when you do not feel that you are in the mood to praise God, and you have too much else distracting you or taking away from the joy that you feel in your life or in the world, when you cannot feel a way to praise God, you can have that list that you have written down. And you can say, I do still have reasons to praise God. And here they are. All I need to do is look at the list. So that I can include praise for God in every prayer that I pray. In the next five weeks, we'll be looking at five main types of prayer. First is adoration, then confession, thanksgiving, supplication, and lament. That is basically the Acts prayer that you may have heard of, uh, and I added on the event at the end. A lot of Christians focus too highly on supplication, that is, making requests of God. Some do not feel that it is their place to lament, and they forget to give God any thanksgiving within their hearts. It is important to realize that a balanced prayer, or a balanced series of prayers, must be regularly visit all five of the major types of prayer. The exception may be that you may not have anything to lament or complain to God about, but many do, and we need to know that it is okay to complain to God if we have that complaint. And perhaps the most important of all of these prayer types is adoration. When we do not regularly have moments in our lives but we adore God and adore what God has done in the world in the past 6,000 years and also in our lives in the past billions of years, however many years the earth was created. All that God has done forever 
for the world. And all that God has done for our own lives as well. And if we do not do that, then we may be attacked with ideas that will tell us that God is not worth all the effort that we put into following God. We need to combat these attacks by putting efforts into renewing our adoration of God whenever it is possible. These efforts of adoration come in worship, prayer, and divine mindfulness. That is, we are thinking of God unceasingly by incorporating God into every part of our lives and by seeking to know God in everything that we do. The first type of prayer is adoration. Does the beauty of nature give you reason for adoration? Does the complexity of life does the fact that you wake up every morning cause you to keep praising God? God is the one who breathes breath into our lungs and sustains us by giving us something to hope for. We hope for good things to come. We hope for the next adventure. We hope for Jesus to come and make things right. First, we practice adoration through worship. When we sing songs to God, we are worshiping. When we sing songs about God, we are often adoring God. We are looking up to God. How we sing, how great thou art, God. Be thou my vision. They are weak, but he is strong. When we practice communion, we are adoring God because we are choosing to eat at the table that he laid out for us. We are accepting his invitation to eat with him. Expressing our adoration makes us want to eat with God. Wants us, it makes us want to come to God. It puts us in the right mindset so that we can come to God with full faith and confidence when we pray. We have reminded ourselves of all the good things about God that we can believe in the power of God to make things right. We need to believe in God as our Savior in order to pray for God to save us, for Jesus to save us. If we do not believe that God is our, if we do not truly believe and have full confidence that God is our Savior, that we cannot pray with full confidence for God to save us. Adoration is a prerequisite for confident prayer. When we praise God and worship, we have set the scene for deeply connecting with God. We also practice adoration when we engage in prayer. In addition to singing and talking about God and worship, we can adore God privately. We can pray prayers such as this. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. First Chronicles 29. When we build adoration into our prayer, it not only helps us expand our confidence, it helps us to pray with positivity. Our prayers can and should include things that we feel that God has not responded to. We should keep praying with persistence for those things. If we stop at our request, however, we may be left wanting. If we do not start and or end with praise, we will probably not be satisfied. Adoration and prayer helps us to meet our wants because we realize that God is all we need. Adoration and prayer helps us meet our wants because we realize that God is all we need. The author of Psalm 50 expresses adoration in his prayer as God is all that he needs. The Mighty One, 
God the Lord speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Even when it's only two hours apart from one another, that gets more. Now, lastly, adoration of God helps create divine mindfulness. We were created to give God the glory so that others might hear and believe in the Lord. When we give God adoration for every good thing that we see, and when we make it a habit, we are connecting with God in so many separate moments. We are helping our lives to revolve around God and bring God to the center our to the center of our attention more than we have before. Furthermore, it causes us to look at the world in which we live with a bit more positive light, because we have it positive added into our moments every time we pray. It helps us to focus on the good and not on the bad. Thinking of God unceasingly creates a positive mindset and a constant reminder of God's caring presence. As I write, I love to play praise music in the background. I also love to play it as I drive. Every moment of our lives is another moment that we can spend loving and praising the Lord, sending our adoration to God, adding that extra positive into our lives. Adoration is the most important form of prayer. If you have remembered that your most important conversation is prayer, your most important conversation is prayer. Remember also that the most important type of prayer is adoration. Adoration gives us the confidence in a good God that we need to faithfully ask for our supplications. This good God we need to faithfully ask for our supplications. It also helps us to realize that God is in fact all that we need. It helps us also to be mindful of God all the time. Whether it is fulfilling your spirit of adventure, praising God for the good gifts of nature, or simply adoring God for what God has given you. Be sure that your prayer life adores the Lord. May all honor and glory forever be to God. Thanks be to God. Chapter uh, 12. It's 12. Yeah, but it's wrong in the bulletin. It's Luke 12, uh, not Luke 10. Uh, Luke chapter 12 tells us that uh, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When you invest generously in the work to which God calls us, your whole life is drawn into fulfilling relationship with God and with the people you are helping. Let us give our focus to what is the true treasure of our lives, for the ushers come forward to receive our wedding offering. Thank you. 
Let us ask God to bless our gifts together. Thank you, God, for welcoming us into your caring realm, where we claim the duties of others as our concern. We are finding a homeland in your service, and we are grateful. Above all, may our offerings be an outpouring of thanksgiving for a God who does not forget us. Your promises are sure, and your faithfulness is to all generations. Lead us to deeper faith, fuller trust, and greater responsiveness. May we hear your knock, answer your call, and serve where we are sent. May all people discern the treasure you offer. Amen. May be seated as we sing together our communion and break thou the bread of life found in our red books, number 204.
This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. God be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. We give you thanks, Holy One, Almighty and Eternal God, always and everywhere, through Jesus Christ, the only one begotten by you before all time, by whom you made the world and all things. We bless you for your continual love and care for every creature. We praise you for forming us in your image and for calling us to be your people. Although we rebelled against your love, you did not abandon us in our sin, but sent us prophets and teachers to lead us into the way of salvation. Above all, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, our only Savior, who is the way, the truth, and the life. In the fullness of time, you came to us and received our nature in the person of Jesus, who, in obedience to you, by suffering on the cross and being raised from the dead, delivered us from the way of sin and of death. We praise you that Jesus now reigns with you in glory and ever lives to pray for us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads us into truth, defends us in adversity, and gathers us from every people to unite us in one holy church. Therefore, with the entire company of saints in heaven and on earth, we worship and glorify you, God most holy. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to the Lord with songs of praise. For in the night of betrayal, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke the bread and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and after giving you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Holy One, may you show forth among us the presence of your life-giving Word and Holy Spirit to consecrate this bread and this cup, and to sanctify us and your entire church through these holy mysteries. Grant that all who share the communion of the body and blood of our risen Savior may be one in Jesus Christ. May we remain faithful in love and in hope until the perfect feast with our exalted Savior and the eternal joy of your heavenly realm. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life that Christ brings. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and was raised for you. 
All things are now ready. We will be continuing to bring the elements to you where you are seated, and we will bring both the bread and the juice at the same time. Please hold on to them until all are served. Then we will partake of the bread together because we are one body in Christ. And you may drink the cup as the Spirit moves you to do so, to symbolize the unique relationship that we each have with Christ. give you thanks 
for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us all, and unite with us all, who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may be faithfully present and that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Good. Amen. So we come to our time of joys and concerns. We celebrate the birthdays of Sharon Weller and Brittany Weller. So happy birthday to them. Uh, also, I do have an update on Shirley Dick. Uh, she is now out of the hospital. Uh, she was in the yeah. hospital for a while, uh, and uh, she is now in the Willows Rehab Center, room 304. Uh, so I am, I did go see her yesterday, but she was pretty tired, so I'm uh, not sure that uh, she was uh, recognizing my presence there. I think she's tired, and she... Uh, uh, he's still recovering from uh, her uh, surgery, she's hip replacement, so uh, I hope that uh, she continues, I hope and pray that she continues to recover well, it will probably take some time, uh, that she'll be in the Willows, uh, that she is in Willows 304, if any of you are called to go visit her uh, there. So thank you for your prayers for Shirley, and uh, she will appreciate the continued prayers that you're able to give. Cool. Are there any other uh, prayers or uh, updates to our prayer list? I recognize I use an old prayer concerns list here. Uh, Bonnie Shop's memorial service will be uh, a private family memorial service on the 28th of August uh, here uh, at the Fireside Cemetery in the afternoon. Uh, so that will be on the calendar there. We continue to keep her family in prayers as we grieve her loss and also as they go through the process of planning this service. Are there any other joys or concerns you should share with us or updates to our list uh, for this morning? If there are none, then let us pray together. Holy God, make us aware of your coming to us. Make us sensitive to your presence and alert to your call, that we may know that we dwell in you and you in us, and that we may give ourselves to you in love and service through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, we come to you for guidance. We pray for pilgrims and seekers, all who strive for a better world. We ask your blessing on all who are seeking to extend their vision, their sensitivities, or their horizon. We remember all who are seeking to live disciplined lives, all who are new to the faith, all who are learning of you. Lord, guide all who in the church are leaders and teachers. Lord, we put our trust in you. You are our hope and our salvation. We adore you, Lord. Help us to increase our adoration and our ability to share it as we pray for our own deepest need. And also for the need of another. We give thanks for all who have built up our world. Lord, give us the wisdom to build on firm foundations. We give you thanks for all who have extended our vision, who have increased our capacity to understand and to love. We pray for all who have shared their vision with us, for preachers and teachers, for artists, craftspeople, for our friends and our loved ones. We ask your blessing upon all who live in poverty, those who live in squalid surroundings 
and all who live without much hope or vision. May adoration pass to and through them as well. Holy God, who comes to us in breath, visits us from the throne of heaven, and sets us aflame with amazement and joy. You open our paths to new visions and guide our feet deeper into your wisdom. We pray especially for those who are in difficulty at this time, remembering all who are ill or unable to cope with their own, that they may know your love and your protection. We pray for Bob Bowman, Judy Boyer, Bill Carroll, Shirley Dick, Mike Hamer, Jay Jackson, Roger King, Suzanne Kopko, Don Miller, Jack Ryan, Dorothy Sheriff, John Shumway, Eric Smith, and Omaisa. May your rod and your staff comfort them and grant them peace. We also pray for the family and friends of those who have recently died. May you meet them, God, in their anger and in their grief. Lord, help to give us faith to trust your presence. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It is not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
invite you to uh, join us for uh, something uh, in the counting room. We do have candy that was left by Sarah, as well as pastries that I still have to get from the refrigerator downstairs, but they are uh, in the refrigerator. So I invite you to join us for fellowship uh, afterwards. And now be dressed for action and ready to serve. For the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Be not afraid, for it is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom, an unfailing treasure, and an eternal blessing. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day until Christ comes to make things well. Go in peace, and amen. Thank <laughs> you. 